Welcome to Love Them Knives channel. Hey guys, we've got the Y Start, the big fancy one, the LK 5015D. Welcome to Love Them Knives channel. Didn't we already say that before? Got the 5015D, bought it from the Y Start store whatever the one that they gave me the link to I'll give you the link to their Instagram and you can converse with them if you wish I did I know that and so they you know they had a picture of this knife on their Instagram and I thought man this is crazy looking and I was stupid enough to think this was Moku Tai and it's not or Thai Mascus it's not it's an anno job so it's anodized to look like uh, uh, you know, Moku Tai or Thai Mascus, but it's not that. If it was that, the $188 I paid for it would have been a freaking bargain. But the fact that this is just a fancy anno job, eh, okay, <laughs> let's talk about it. In any case, so the 5015 is one that I've reviewed before. This is kind of the, just, just the regular 5015. You can get this in regular silver color or this blue. And so I kept this around because I wanted to show you both of them. Same knife, okay, except, I mean, and these are big knives too. These are big knives. So let me show you. I mean, it's basically a four inch blade and pretty close and about nine inches overall length so about uh, almost 23 centimeters and uh, about a 102 millimeter length blade okay why am i doing it with this in any case same size knife same knife um there you go and there's the action right there not bad not bad not bad action. It came instead of in a in a Y start box, which is where my 5015 came. It came in a zipper pouch. So your extra $108 buys you something, right? Not much. It doesn't buy you much. But they give you an extra VG10, just a regular VG10 blade in here. So there you go. They give you a VG10 blade. You can you can trade it out if you want. Otherwise, you have this Damascus blade. And I think the Damascus blade, let's throw this aside, I'm sorry. This Damascus blade, I think I've heard that it's like a VG10 core. So, um you know, I I am not a huge fan of Damascus. I think it's really cool sometimes and you know you get the raindrop damascus from nickels and and people like that that do the make their own damascus really nice high-end stuff that's cool and damas steel is nice as well but when you're buying it from a site in china and they're putting a damascus blade on here I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's all in it. I guess I could have it tested if I cared. But to me, it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, but I was interested. I mean, overall, it's kind of a good looking knife. I mean, the package there is pretty attractive. I like the design. There's no question about that. But big knife. So that's cool. It's centered up. It was a little off center earlier, but um, the pivot was loose. And so I had to do that with my magic screwdriver. And you know why? Because look at the pivot. I don't like that. I don't like it. I like a Torx, uh, you know, pivot. Basically, you could make this smooth on one side, put a Torx entryway on that way, put a D-shaped pivot through there so it wouldn't turn. And then that would be much nicer. I mean, just, I mean, in, in my mind, if you're going to charge me almost 200 bucks for a knife with a fancy anno job and basically VG10 Damascus steel, then, you know, give me a decent pivot. I don't like this at all. Not at all. And, you know, they do this on all their knives. 
and it's annoying. I really don't like it. I mean, I really don't. Here's the problem. That screwdriver slips out a place and skates across here. I mean, it'll put a nice big gouge in that titanium, scrape the anode away, whatever. You are not going to like that, so you're going to need to be very careful when you do that. Let me give you some uh, information on it. Here's my little page from where I got the knife. And it's, uh, I don't even know if they, oh, industrial trade. Yeah, why start Yang Jin, why start industrial and trading? So I'll give you the link to that. It was 188 bucks. There's only so many they're making. Real Damascus, okay. Um, yeah, and that's fine, whatever. Next. Also, I wanted to let you know that we did test the steel on the LK5012, which is that purple knife that I have in my steel testing video, Batch 2. So I'll put the link to Batch 2, where there is the Y-Start, titanium Y-Start with VG10 that was tested. It, it tested as... VG10, although there was some silicone picked up by the analyzer gun when it scanned it. <clears throat> and so I think what they're doing is they're wiping these things down with some kind of a, uh, an oil or a finish or something when, when they do the production. And it starts interfering with the complete scan to be able to read up on, on the PMI gun. So in any case, yes, I was told, yes, it's VG10. Yes, it has a, a silicon reading in there and there's no silicon in VG10. So it shouldn't be reading that. In any case, it was a 57.4 HRC. Well, the Spyderco Enduro we tested was a 57.8 AR, HRC. So, you know, that, that just kind of gives you that. And here you go. Overall length, uh, eight and a half inches. No, it's closer to nine. No, blade length's closer to four inches. And it's supposedly four millimeters. I don't know. I disagree with, with their measurements. We just put that on camera. So, sorry. Uh, it's not an eight and a half inch long uh, knife. But in any case, however they want to do it. Vacuum treated Damascus. All right, whatever. Any case, so, hey, somewhere in here, and I'll, I'll show you. I've got too many pieces of things printed out here. Here's... I took it apart. So you do have multi-row ceramic bearings. Okay, so there's a plus there. You have a ceramic detent ball. You have an over-travel stop, hardened steel insert. Okay, here's your steel washers that interface with the bearings. And then, of course, with the blade on the other side. And if you can tell real close, there's a rubber washer, rubber O-ring around there. So, uh, to try and keep it from backing out, which didn't work because I don't... I think the one that backed out on me was the other one, and I don't think there was an O-ring on that, because that is the screw. That's the pivot collar. So in any case, there you go. Nothing terribly uh, difficult about that. And let's do a little bit of exploring. Is it 4 millimeter blade stock? Eh, 3.88. 0.152. Now let's see what the overall fatness is, if we can get to that. Eh, about a half inch right in here 0.48 basically which is 12.14 millimeters take a look at it. it's a contoured titanium scales here at least they got kind of a wrapped around anno job it looks like there you know all the way so I've never seen one done exactly like that Interesting. In any case, and it seems not to fade too bad. I've I've handled this a bunch, and I can see that it 
kind of fades a little bit. Um, back in here a little. I think you kind of notice it as I turn the knife. It does have a backspacer. Uh, it has jimping on the flipper tab. Pretty intuitive as far as the jimping goes. And it snaps out. It's not... Um, hmm. Well, I can't. I can't throw it out, not comfortably in any case, but I'd say about a five and a half on the detent scale. But it's fairly snappy. It holds that detent pretty long. Let's see if I can fail it. Tried to fail it there, but it did finally completely come out. So it's not easy to fail. Got a nice uh, choil here up against where the blade is so for sharpening purposes should be good piercing should be good uh well not great slicer obviously because of the grind of the blade but not bad okay i mean it's not a total loss at 188 dollars i just think you can get you could you could you have choices in the almost 200 dollar range of knives and getting this upscale Y start as opposed to paying $80 for this. You know, I just don't think it's worth the extra $108. I just don't. Now here's, you know, the Y start again. And here's, here's the uh, 5015. Okay. Y start outdoors knife and tool. And then here it actually gives the real name of their store, I guess. So um, let me see what it was. $79 for this. So there you go. Uh, I really like this. I wish the pivot was different. I wish the pivot was a lot different. Obviously, you're looking here. Uh, right and left hand tip up available carry. So that's nice. And the same works here as well. Now, let's see what it weighs. That's probably important to a lot of you. It's important to me, that's for sure. And at this kind of mid mid range. 4.78 ounces, so that's not that heavy for, you know, 135 grams. You know, not that bad for a nine inch knife. It's really strange though. Bertha, come on, let's do this again because, you know, really, well, I guess you can say three and three quarter for the blade if you go to this furthest part forward, but really then it's still three and seven eighths. Uh, and saying eight and a half, I mean, eight and a half doesn't even quite get you to the lanyard hole. So I'm sorry. I don't know where you're getting it. In any case, yeah, it's fairly slender though, about the same as the uh, paramilitary 2 and where is my pm2 rex get out here buddy and that's comparison right there so yeah it's a bigger knife not by a whole lot half inch close to three quarter i guess if you're going to call it nine because this is eight and a quarter overall it's a bigger knife definitely a bigger knife not a whole lot thicker in the scales, but the blade is just about the same. This is about 3.7, so this is closer to 3.9, you know, as far as blade stock goes. But, yeah. yeah nice action. There's really this cutout. I can't get my finger in it. I don't know if you could, but uh, it's uh, nah. I can't. I can't get in there enough to to do that. To use that as a as another opening technique. So I'm I'm stuck with this. I'm stuck with this. But yeah, I'm gonna let you go. I mean, I just wanted to put it on my channel and kind of give it a go uh they said there's limited numbers and they were saying something like they only made 20 of these i don't know about that i still see them listed as of the day i uh 
film this, so don't know for sure. But this one, yeah, I like this one really well. I like carrying it. I think it's cool. But, I mean, I don't think this is worth the extra money myself. If you really like the looks of it, and, you know, if you get it anodized, that'll cost you about 50 bucks. So, you know, there's 80 bucks plus 50. There's, you know, 130 and then the extra blade. So it gets you close, I guess, if you want those extra things done, you know, if that's that important to you. But it's a big knife. It's not that heavy. It's under five ounces. And it's very slender here. So, yeah. Very slender. Centered up. Flips great. Ergos are fine. I mean, see the review I did on this one. But ergos are fine. You know, no, no jimping or anything up here. Reverse grip feels good. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's reasonable. It's, it's stunning, I guess, for people who aren't knife uh, enthusiasts. You pull this out and show it to some friend of yours. They'll be oohing and on. So it's a lot more showy than the standard, you know, 50-15. But as, as practicality goes, if it was just going to be a carry user knife, then, I, you know, I think this one's the deal. But... Going to leave you to it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, stay tuned. We'll have another video soon, another review very soon on something probably odd and unusual. Because that's what we do around here. You know what we do. We love them knives, so stay sharp.